I'm currently still outside the Lowry Theatre, where audience members are anxiously waiting in anticipation for comedian Noel Fielding, who is about to embark on his first live performance in five years. Noel will be bringing to the stage his unique brand of stand-up comedy, live animation, music and his best-known TV characters. This is definitely a show not to be missed. Welcome to Flash News. This is your one minute roundup. The brand new series of I'm a Celebrity kicks off on November 15th, and ITV have recently unveiled this year's official lineup. Stars such as Dragon Den's Duncan Bannatyne, X Factor's choreographer Brian Friedman, and Made in Chelsea's Spencer Matthews are all preparing themselves to take on the creepy crawlies and nasty surprises they will face in the jungle. In other news, in retaliation to the terrorist attacks in Paris on Friday evening, the French Air Force have pounded the Islamic State in Syria's Raqqa, which involved 10 fighter jets dropping 20 bombs. The massive airstrikes have destroyed two jihadi sites in and around Raqqa. However, it has been reported that no civilians have been killed or injured. Back to entertainment news. Pixar are set to release Finding Dory in 2016, which will take us back into the water with everyone's favourite forgetful fish, 12 years after we were first introduced to the lovable characters in Finding Nemo. The comedian, Ellen DeGeneres, signed up for this film way back in 2012 and says she is dying to discover the audience's response to the sequel. I'm sure we will not be disappointed. That was your One Minute Roundup. I'll be back at 10pm, but for now, here's Family Guy. Auditions are currently underway for the short films that are being produced by the new, but already very established, Salford Filmmakers Society. Founded by second year media and performance student Ryan Mulvey, this society has come on leaps and bounds in such a short space of time, with over 100 students signing up and taking part. It caters for a variety of interests across the board of filmmaking, whether it be acting, script writing, directing or producing. These films will be being produced within the next few weeks and will be able to be viewed by the public within the foreseeable future. Why not come along and join us for the premiere? I don't know about you, but with Christmas nearly upon us, I'm really starting to get into the festive mood. So with that, I've decided to make some winter warmer cocktails. Don't worry though guys, you won't need to splash out too much in expensive alcohol. All my products are from local non-branded supermarkets, and my cocktails taste delicious. For this, you're going to need some spiced rum, some amaretto, some cola, some crushed ice, a shot glass to measure your spirits, a cocktail shaker, now I don't have a cocktail shaker, but a large glass and a small glass put together will work just perfectly. Two glasses for the finished product, some straws, and if you're feeling a bit fancy, you can jazz up your drink with a few Christmas decorations. To start, quarter fill the glass with crushed ice. Next, pour 25 millilitres of spiced rum. and 25 millilitres of amaretto. Into the glass. Once you've done that, give it a little shake. Make sure you don't spill it everywhere. <laughs> Next, you'll need your serving glass to pour the mixture in. And then all you need to do is top the rest of the glass up with a bit of cola. Finally, you want to garnish your cocktail with a straw and a little bit of Christmas decoration if you want to. So I'm going to use a little bit of green ribbon and a little bit of red ribbon. And we're going to cut it off and put it around the top. Now I would highly recommend that you haven't drank any of the cocktail before using scissors. And there we have it, our finished winter warmer cocktail. Perfect for a cosy night in or even before a wild night out. Now all that's left for me to do is sit back, relax and enjoy. Mmm, delicious.
Hello and welcome. Today I'm joined by Chris Wardle, who's recently obtained his pilot's licence, and I'm here to discover just what it's like to be a pilot. So tell me, Chris, what kind of pilot are you and, and what does that allow you to do? Uh, basically, I'm a private pilot at the moment, and that allows me to fly a single-engined propeller aircraft, like a small, small aircraft. Yeah. Uh, I can carry about four people, maybe six at a push, yeah. and uh, it allows me to fly it for leisure flights and to build up my hours towards a higher rating. So I can't earn money from it yet, but it's, it's still worthwhile. Oh, great. So what is it that you learn in your training in order to become a pilot? Well, you learn the essentials of actually flying an aircraft and everything involved. Um, so you've got the basics, which are actually getting a feel for how the aircraft flies. Uh, but you've also got things on top of that, like air traffic control, communicating, making sure you're coordinated in the skies. Yeah. You've also got navigation. You've got to know where you are. You can't follow a road like you can in a car. So you've got to know where you are at any particular time. And um, then finally, you've got like emergency procedures on top of that. So you've got to know what happens if you have an engine failure, what yeah. happens if the aircraft isn't flying fast enough, does it stall, is it, you know. So, um, yeah, it's, it's essentially, as a whole, it's the first part of the training um, before, uh, before you do anything else. So do you intend on becoming an airline pilot? And if so, what have you got to do next? Well, there's a fair few more steps, unfortunately, after a private pilot's licence. So the first one of which is a night rating, which effectively allows you to fly the aircraft at night. Uh, a multi-engine rating allows you to fly an aircraft with more than one engine, as the name suggests. And then finally, you've got a commercial license, which, while similar to the private pilot's license, actually allows you to earn money on what you do. But it's quite a bit stricter than the private pilot's license. Well, I wish you all the best with that, Chris, and thank you very much for coming. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today, but thank you very much for watching. Join us next week. Bye-bye. Well, we here at Blue Peter have had a fantastic day visiting the BBC Breakfast Studio. Why not join us next week when we're going to be revealing the contents of a time capsule buried by Blue Peter presenters in 1971. And we are going to be giving two lucky children the opportunity to win two tickets to spend a weekend away in Alton Towers. If you want to get involved in the competition, why not log on to our website, www.bbc.co.uk forward slash Blue Peter, where you'll find full details on how to apply. Thanks for watching. See you next week.